Hello everyone and welcome to Petco Park. The San Diego Padres open the season tomorrow against the Dodgers in LA and Lee, they're doing it with some of the highest expectations in recent memory. Derek, it's been an off season of change and coming up in the next 30 minutes, you'll meet the new players. We'll talk about the storylines for the season and the change of the culture at Petco Park. Padres preview starts right now. Driven it again, deep center field, over the yellow line, home run. 2-2, lost the bat, lost the bat. Fight three, that's Andrew Kashner. Everywhere you look, there are new faces in Friars uniforms. We have, you know, 60 guys in camp and well over half are new uh, to a Padre spring training. And you don't see that often. You don't see the turnover. And with so many changes to the roster comes a brand new set of expectations. Now, it's not about hope. It's about an expectation that we're going to be a competitive winning team this year and again, year after year after year. It started with the trade for superstar outfielder Matt Kemp from the Dodgers. When I got traded over, I asked AJ, I asked him if, if, if I was the only, only thing they were going to be doing this offseason. He said, uh, just watch. <laughs> then came the trades for outfielders Will Myers and Justin Upton, and eventually the signing of big game James Shields. The feeling from veteran Padres? I was excited. I, I always couldn't believe it. You know, it's. Um, Makes you wonder why other teams weren't doing the same thing. The man at the center of it all, first year general manager A.J. Preller. In order to get you know, what you think are quality players, you have to give up quality players back. I mean, you're, you're, you're always waiting for that phone call from the GM that's looking for your, uh, the bottom three guys on your roster and your organization, but uh, that doesn't usually come. A.J. had plan A, B, C, and D going into the uh, offseason, and uh, clearly we were able to execute plan A. But plan A comes with a hefty price tag, a record payroll of more than $100 million for Padre ownership. Yeah, I'm on food stamps, so I, uh, <laughs> I had to hitchhike over. But yeah, we're, we're all in. All kidding aside, it seems this big bet is already paying off. Ticket sales are up 600% compared to last year. It's exciting. I mean, uh, fans are re-engaged. Uh, there's an energy that uh, I've been in San Diego for 40 years, and that energy's back. People are talking baseball, and it, it's fun to be a Padre right now. Part of the reason the energy is back, the Padres overhauled their offense. Yeah, last year, the Padres were dead last in offense. This spring, though, they're in the top 10 in six categories, including hits, batting average, and homers. And the core of the offense is an all-new outfield, a former MVP candidate, a perennial all-star, and a former Rookie of the Year. That ball's still going. That ball is gone, Matt Kemp. Deep left center field. Matt Kemp has shown he's comfortable with his new team. The former Dodger tapped into his power swing right from the start of spring training. But the big question for this left fielder, the slugger's health. You know, everybody at some point in their career gets hurt. You know, I went through a, a time where, you know, when I was younger and earlier in my career, you know, I mean, actually two years ago, I wasn't, I was never getting hurt. I think I played more games than anybody in baseball, but, you know, it happens that way. I think my body caught up to me and, you know, kind of broke down a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's, it, like I said, it's just the way you bounce back and, and, and go about your business. Justin Upton came from the Braves to hit. He slugged 29 homers, 102 RBIs last year. Could he be a leader? You know, emotional leadership's a little bit overrated. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a few guys that, you know, will, will step ahead of the crowd and, and you know, guys will look to them. They, they keep, the, keep the team on their under control and, and not panicking. But other than that, man, you know, you go about your business the right way, you'll win ball games. The other piece of the outfield, Will Myers, a former rookie of the year with the Rays. His two challenges, recovering from wrist surgery and switching to center field. Uh, you know, I've played a lot of center field in the minor leagues. Um, I think the biggest learning curve is just getting uh, used to the to Petco and uh, the dimensions and uh, figuring that out. This new outfield could combine for 70 home runs this season. But even though a lot of the attention has been on the offense, manager Bud Black says this is a pitch first team. And you need a quality catcher to run that pitching staff. They have an all-star. Guys feed off of positive energy and that's, that's ultimately what I try and bring. Derek Norris had one goal this spring, build rapport with the pitching staff. If you come in here just kind of doing your own thing, it's tough to gain a confidence as a catcher for these guys, so just trying to be open, vocal, um, just let these guys know anytime, any place, anywhere. I'm open for them conversation. Let me know some information so we can mold together as a group. The 26-year-old from Goddard, Kansas, arrived via trade from the Oakland A's, and he admits catching a new set of arms isn't easy. 
it can be complicated, but I think with, with the staff here, with, with Buddy and Balsley and, and some of the guys they have around circulating, they, they've been very good to me so far. They've, they've uh, let me know a lot of information that a lot of guys don't get to know until they've catch, caught a guy maybe four or five times. So um, even though I've only caught some of these guys a couple times, I feel like I've been with them for you know a few weeks already. Flying to left field, the base hit. Derek Norris turning it on. The last week of spring training. Known for his glove, Norris has shown some pop with his bat and was named an all-star last year. I wouldn't consider myself at all uh, a power hitter. Uh, I think the most homers I've had in the big leagues is, is 10 in a year. Um, obviously, in small sample size, being in the platoon. If I were to put a label on it, I'd like to see myself as defensive first and then offensive. But um, in a perfect world, I'd like to be 50-50, you know, a good hitter and a quality catcher behind the plate. Norris says he's ready to be an everyday catcher on a good team. There's a lot of talented guys in the room, I think. Um, but the most important thing definitely that we talked about this morning in our meeting is there's a lot of guys in this room that, that have proven some success in the big leagues, but also have something to prove. Uh, Camp from LA, he's definitely got something to prove. He's got that fire in him, up to him going into free agency. He's wanting to have a big year. Myself being in a platoon, wanting to play every day. I think that's going to fuel us throughout the course of the year. Norris struggled a bit right out of the gates this spring, but he has been ramping it up the last two weeks of Cactus League play. And Derek, if the Padres are going to have a good season, they need bounce back years at bat from a couple of their infielders. The Padres could use some production out of first baseman Yonder Alonso. He came from the Reds in Matt Lato's trade four years ago, but has struggled to find consistency following two hand surgeries. You know, those are things that right now I'm not really uh, focusing on, you know, it's kind of past me right now and uh, for right now it's just getting ready to work with the guys, obviously get my feet wet. And a line drive into left center field. Third baseman Will Middlebrooks has shown all kinds of promise, but with nagging injuries last year, the Red Sox gave up on him. Now he has a new home and has had an impressive spring. They just told me to compete for a job, which is, that's fun, that's what it's about, it's about coming out and competing and uh, getting better every day. And Get to know your teammates, and uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Second baseman Jed Jerko had a very good rookie season in 2013, but last year he didn't hit, then suffered a foot injury. His health, his confidence, and the pressure of a big contract are the issues he has to deal with now. You know when you're hitting 100 or whatever, it's, it's hard to be real confident, but um, you know, it was something I'm always confident as a player. I, I always felt like I could still go up there and get, get the big hit when I needed to, but um, yeah, maybe, maybe it faltered a little bit there, and you know, that's something to learn from. Coming up, we had depth, um, and our starting staff really wants to win. We'll break down the Padres' new pitching staff. Plus, that's the tough part is like, you know, trading guys that you know are going to be successful elsewhere. Constructing a winner. We'll talk with GM AJ Preller and the front office about their vision to bring a winning ball club to San Diego. And definitely got to get a haircut and make sure I don't have anything in my nose. And why Matt Kemp is so concerned about his appearance. Padres preview continues next. If the Padres are going to have a successful season, the starting rotation will have to shine. It may be one of the best in baseball. They proved that last year. And in the spring, they've looked very strong. They're anchored by a big offseason addition. Curveball changeup, slider, I mean, he, he could pitch. At the top of the rotation, new ace James Shields. He signed a franchise record four years, $75 million contract this offseason and he's ready to build on the success he had with the Royals last year. I'm as hungry as ever. Um, you know, I think uh, when you come to the last game of the World Series to, to sniff the ring a little bit um, and not be able to get it is, is, uh, is not a good feeling. So I'm, I'm hungry to get, get back there. Nasty <laughs> breaking ball. Also hungry, Andrew Kashner. At six feet, six inches, he has all the stuff. Now the 28-year-old's trying to leave nagging injuries behind. Came out to San Diego, you know, beginning of January, started working with Brett McCabe and uh, just, you know, kind of stretching more, kind of lengthen out the body a little bit and, uh, you know, just get back and get prepared for the grind. Ian Kennedy is entering the final year before free agency. His reputation, a bulldog and a horse. He threw 201 innings last year, tops on the team. His philosophy, give me the ball and get out of the way. But I take a lot of pride in eating up those innings. Um, I watched a lot of really good pitchers early on in my career. Uh, I watched Andy Pettit a lot with um, just how he went along with his, his work ethic and uh, what he did off the field. Tyson Ross was dumped by Oakland in 2012, but has found stardom in San Diego. Crossing paths with manager Bud Black and pitching coach Darren Balsley has been huge for the 27-year-old hurler. We've got a ton of knowledge and uh, 
you know, Buddy, Buddy kind, of, kind of gives us a longer leash out there at times. You know, he's been through it. He knows what we're going through, and, uh, you know, the communication's great on their part. New to the staff, ex-Blue Jay Brandon Morrow. He's a power arm with 765 strikeouts and 735 major league innings. Coming to the National League and a pitcher-friendly Petco Park. It's great after playing in the Homer Dome for five years, so it should be, uh, it should be good. A couple of those, you know, wall scrapers in Toronto turn into outs here. The starting rotation is great, but so is the bullpen. And it's all led by the closer, Joaquin Benoit. Kevin Quackenbush is the eighth inning guy. Mid-game setup pitchers led by Dale Thayer and newcomers Brandon Maurer and Sean Kelly. Benoit, the closer, offers a veteran's viewpoint on the roster the Padres have put together. I think it's, uh, it's good to, to have a mix of uh, young guys and veterans because uh, it, it, it takes a lot from, uh, from the veterans to teach some of, the, some of the, young, the young kids, but it takes a lot from the young kids to learn. So uh, when we have a, a bunch of guys that have been in the playoffs and uh, trying to do the best for to, to take this team up to the promised land. Now there are other big names on that pitching staff to watch, namely the guys coming back from surgery. And Derek, the Padres are awaiting the arrival at midseason of Corey Lubke and Josh Johnson. Johnson went 31 and 14 over a two plus year period with the Marlins, but then had elbow and forearm surgery. He believes he's cleared the emotional hurdle of let it rip, pitch all out. For me, you know, the first time around, I just kind of went with it and said, you know what, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So, um, you know, I came in with the same uh, same mentality this time around, and uh, it's been so far so good. So um, you just got to find a way mentally to, to kind of get past that, and um, you know, it, it, just to tell yourself that it's fixed, it's fine. Just go out there and, and do what you do. Luki, the young left-hander, broke down after signing a big contract extension. He had to deal with the horrors the first transplant didn't take, and he had to have another surgery. He went looking for pitchers to talk to. You know, I've talked to a few guys. You know, Sean Kelly's had some, JJ's had two. Those are spread out a little bit, but uh, you know, me and uh, Dan Hudson talked uh, a lot last year and then uh, a little bit through the offseason, so we've been using the same therapist, too, a little bit. So to, to a certain extent, you know, I got a pretty good idea of the way things should go. Those guys certainly won't be on the opening day roster tomorrow, but they could join the team by June. Coming up, we've shown you the team, but how do they stack up against their opponents? We'll break down the NL West next. And a giant new addition. Really, we can do anything with this. I mean, it's the biggest in the National League, and it's the third biggest in baseball. Why well, the Padres say fans will get a larger-than-life experience at the ballpark this season. Padres preview continues next. You have to pack it and pack it and pack it. There's eight tons of material out there on that mound. Packing it, painting it, prepping it. The Padres groundskeepers have been hard at work getting the field ready for the home opener on Thursday. So after we get the field laser graded, which has to be done very precisely, because you only get one shot at getting the grade, then the sod comes in. And we laid approximately 20,000 to 25,000 square feet a day. The Padres entered this new season with a new roster and also some new leadership in the front office. The general manager came from Texas. The president and CEO had been with the Red Sox and then in Miami. General manager A.J. Preller, he's been a dynamo. People across the country are saying this guy won the offseason. Mike D. amazed at his game plan. Ron Fowler awed by his work ethic. The Matt Kemp deal reportedly done. How about an outfield of Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, and Will Myers? AJ Preller, what a job! He has reworked his Padre outfield. This is an historical day. Preller made seven trades in December, brought in veteran proven players, but the cost? Ten top minor leaguers. That's the tough part, is like, you know, trading guys that you know are going to be successful elsewhere. They know are quality players, and uh, but you know, just think maybe there's a little better fit for our team. Mike D knew the blueprint, but was still amazed at the outcome of the deals. Sort of as a perfect storm for us, everything just laid out. Um, you know, uh, again chronologically, we were able to get the Kemp uh, deal done, and then that opened the door for for Myers Upton and what followed. And uh, so all, all these moves were interrelated. Ron Fowler says Preller's approach to getting it done amazing. He really personalizes the relationship that he has with people, and he's a low-key guy, but he's very passionate, quietly competitive, fiercely and quietly competitive. But he's a people person. He loves to be around people. He's candid. He can look you in the eye. 
and uh, he's compelling. I don't care what he's doing, he's compelling at it. Preller inherited a strong pitching staff and added to it. He knows arms are important. And especially today's baseball, injuries, injuries to pitchers. Um, you know, and, you know it's, uh, I'd love it if we if we were able to go one through five all year long, all our starters make their starts, and the same thing in the bullpen, but you know, it's probably not realistic. And, and we made it a point as a, as a baseball ops group that we wanted to give as many options to Buddy and Darren as possible on the pitching side. D praises the ownership group for what they allowed the GM to do. You know, there was never a, a, a point in time where it was you can't or you shouldn't. It was always how do we make this happen, and obviously there's a bottom to the well, but that wasn't the approach this offseason. It was about how can we make this team competitive for a World Series. The Padres' attendance plunged from $3 million the first year at Petco to $2.1 million last year. And Fowler believes the misery is over with tomorrow's opener at Dodger Stadium. I think last year was uh, sort of the beta test for us. Okay, this is not working. And we knew we had to go out and re-energize things. I mean, we're pretty methodical on how we go about it. We're not making snap decisions. But uh, when it became obvious we needed to find a difference maker, uh, Mike did a great job of lining up a, a list of candidates. And uh, the biggest difference maker of the group was the guy we hired. So we talked about the makeup of this team, Hacksaw, but how do they stack up against their NL West opponents? Derek, if you're going to put check marks on a board, I think the Padres have a better starting rotation and a better bullpen than either the Dodgers or Giants. And I think the Padres probably have a better batting order. The big question mark, what will their team defense be like? They hung their hat on that the last couple of years. We won't know till opening day tomorrow afternoon. What's happened with the Giants and the Dodgers to uh, you know, send them down the list a little bit on that uh, standing board? Roster changes. The Dodgers will not be the same team offensively without Matt Kemp, Hanley Ramirez, or D. Gordon. And I think San Francisco is going to miss the Panda Bear, Pablo Sandoval at third base, and power hitting outfielder Mike Morse. And San Francisco has got limitations and injury issues still with their pitching staff. And the Padres look good this year, but however they do this year, they've got a bright future ahead. Hopefully, you, uh, when that day comes and they think I'm ready, um, I think I'll be ready. The Padres are awaiting the arrival of catcher Austin Hedges. The second round pick is considered the number two catching prospect in all of baseball and has spent four years in the minors. I think I'm getting closer every year. Um, as of right now, I'm just focused on getting better this spring training and uh, showing what I can do. The 22-year-old is a tremendous defender, but he still needs to grow in the batter's box. I know Buddy preaches it. It's uh, the, the biggest relationship is uh, between us and the pitchers. And if I can go out there and call a shutout, um, for me, I think I'd rather do that than go four for four. Um, obviously, I'd rather do both. <laughs> but um, uh, for me, I think uh, the focus is defense. College hitting star Hunter Renfro has moved fast through the organization. The first round pick represents what little power the pods have left in the farm system. Quality of pitchers you're facing get tougher and tougher as you march through this? Um, not necessarily. Uh, you know, you get you guys in low A that throw really hard and kind of don't know where it's going, but you know, you got your double A, triple A guys that are really refined and can throw any pitch at any given time and throw for a strike. You know, that's that's the only reason that they're tougher. You know, not necessarily that they got better stuff, they just know how to use it. The small town Mississippi native has hit 27 home runs in two years, and there's a lot expected from him. Here's the Padres' biggest off-season addition. It's 61 feet tall, 123 feet wide. The new video board is the largest in the National League and the third largest in all of baseball. The videos, everything that'll be up there is really going to engage as much as possible from social media interaction to really just every stat you could ever want as a baseball nut, but also just all the fun, all the great cams and all the different fun things that we do, and then player personality stuff. Matt Coy and a staff of 35 people run this thing, and there are some other new features they've added. For the first time this year, you'll really experience when you come to Petco that every video screen in the whole ballpark will be interactive together. Slugger Matt Kemp made a mental note when he saw the new video board. I just know I gotta, you know, take my green screen and all my, my team pictures <laughs> serious because because you know my face is gonna be on that jumbotron. I can't be looking all crazy, so definitely gotta get a haircut and make sure I don't have anything in my nose and. You know, make sure I look good throughout the 162 game. And boy, that video board is even more giant in person. Okay, Hacksaw, let's put you on the record. How are the Padres going to do this season? Derek, Padres have great hitting, unbelievable pitching. I think they're going to win the National League West at 90 and 72. 
and Derek, they're going to play in October. Boy, that would be the first time since 2006. That does it for us here on Padres Preview. We're going to leave you now with some closing thoughts from players on the makeup of this team. It's like a fantasy team over here. You got to stay up on the computer and make up whatever team you wanted to, and this is pretty much what it turned out to be. For me, I think we're, we're, we can compete with anybody and go out there and, and beat anybody we want. There's definitely, you know, some talent in this locker room that hasn't been in here in a while. You got guys that have, uh, you know, World Series experience. I think that uh, I think this team's capable of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm.